Yo, everybody, welcome back to the channel. So basically took a break this weekend and I'm just here doing my thing. I wanted to do an update video to the Google Fi videos that I did. It is 2020, so let's talk about Google Fi, the good things about it, get everyone up to date, try to answer questions as best as possible. And yeah, so what is Google Fi? In a nutshell, Google Fi is Google Phone Service. Originally called Project Fi when it first released and it was only in an invite only type of state, it eventually evolved after some time. Their original plan being $20 for unlimited talk and text, $10 per gig after that. If you set up your account with Project Fi to, you know, say you, you estimate to use three gigs every month, your bill would be $50. But if you only used two gigs in your bill cycle, they would credit you back for the other gig you did not use, your third gig that you were allotted. Uh, but people weren't really biting to that. They wanted something more, so they evolved their flexible plan to kind of be of a hybrid of unlimited and, and flexible. Being that you were billed for six gigs, the six gig was the cutoff point for them to bill you. Any gig that you used after that, you were not billed for, so you would have a bill of $80 and some change. Um, but you could control it. So if you didn't want to use that many gigs, say you only use like one gig, you would only be billed $30. If you needed to use a lot more, you could. You would be billed for the gigabytes that you use up until six gigs. Now, this was their way of trying to entice people who were used to the unlimited plans. However, it really didn't get customers to bite. And so they dropped an unlimited plan for $70, which gave you unlimited talk, text, and data. The throttle point was 22 gigs. So after that, you were slowed to 2G speeds. On the flexible, the throttle point is 15 gigs, and then you're slowed to 2G speeds. On both flexible or unlimited, if you needed more high-speed data when you reach your throttle point, then you can pay an additional $10 per LTE gig. So um, that's initially what, what they have currently right now. Now, with the unlimited plan, you do get access to Google One their $1.99 plan, which gives you 100 gigs of cloud storage, hotel benefit perks and stuff like that in the benefit sections, as well as other companies that they have partnership with to give you guys great deals. And then you get Google support, whether phone, chat, or email. So not bad at all to go with something like that. Um, one of the major perks of Google Fi is the fact that you have access to both Sprint, T-Mobile, and US Cellular's network. And with their Fi capable devices, you can seamlessly switch in between any of those networks. Uh, that way you have coverage no matter wherever you go. They do have a roaming agreement and they can use Verizon's network if any of the three carriers that they have contracted with are not suitable in the area that you're at, you will then for a moment in time be on Verizon's network. That is something that I actually found out chatting with the Google Fi rep. So um, yeah, it's not like you can force yourself onto Verizon's network, but if it's an area that does not, it's not covered good then Ver and Verizon is, you will be able to piggyback it and it's no additional charge to you. You have access to make international calling. You can call out to other countries. I think there's like 50 countries that you can call out to, no additional charge, no additional plan added on. Other countries that's not within that 50 country list, those have a low minute rate um, charge for calling. So you can call family if you have family internationally um, and not really have to add on an international plan. If you're a person who travels, Google Fi works wherever it has contracted with, with I think 150 countries. So you can go to those countries and not have to actually get service there. Google Fi will work there. Either it's gonna automatically connect when you land and you get out off the plane onto the airport. But if it doesn't, just put your phone in airplane mode for three seconds, take it off, and then you'll see it connect. One of the coolest things that a lot of people have, have reported about Google Fi uh, when traveling is that they notice that their phone tells them welcome to whatever country they're flying over. So if they're flying at the border of, you know, say uh, China, and uh, South Korea, once they cross that border from China it'll, and in, into South Korea, your phone will say, welcome to South Korea, and it just works there. Um, so that's one major big benefit. Now, uh, with Google Fi, obviously you're gonna need five capable devices, like the Pixel devices, a couple of Motorola's, and some LG devices actually work to do um, Fi switching. That's switching between any of the three networks that they're contracted with. And so, what if you don't have a Fi capable device? Well, that's not a big problem at all whatsoever. You can bring your own iPhone, your own Samsung Galaxy, a ZTE device, don't matter. You can bring it over to Google Fi. It will have all the benefits of Google Fi except the Fi switch capability. It won't be able to switch between three networks. It will remain on T-Mobile only. So that is a network that you will get coverage from. So not a bad deal at all whatsoever. 
you know, especially if T-Mobile works great in your area. One of the other major benefits of Google Fi is the fact that one, you can get hotspot and it's not an additional charge and there's not a limit of hotspot you could use. Literally, when you activate hotspot on your device with Google Fi, it is counting the data that's used on your phone anyways. So yeah, you don't have a limitation to it and they're not gonna charge you additional that comes with your service. But if you have other devices that have SIM connections, you can also get data only SIM cards. Those are free of charge too. You can order them from your Google Fi app. They will send you out a SIM card kit, pop that kit into, you know, pop the SIM card out of the kit into whatever device you're gonna use, whether it's a tablet, whether it's a laptop with SIM capability, or even another smartphone as like a backup burner phone. And just plug in your code and it connects and it pulls data from the line that it's connected to. So if I use 10 gigs on my main phone and then 10 gigs on a backup phone, it's gonna bill me for, for 20 gigs, which I'm on the unlimited, so I'm not billed per gig rate. But that's another major thing about Google Fi is that you have the ability to use data-only SIM cards for other IOTs, and you have the access of using mobile hotspot without an additional charge. Uh, one of the weirdest things I noticed about Google Fi is that even though it's, it's MVNO, it's prepaid, it's not really prepaid, it doesn't bill like prepaid. And I'll explain it by using my bill for an example. So my bill, my bill cycle is the 23rd of every month to the, um, to the 22nd of the next month. So for example, January 23rd will start my new bill cycle. February 22nd will end my bill cycle. So I'm billed in between those dates. Now, when that bill generates, I am billed for it on March 6th. So that's when they will take the payment out of my account. Now, with Google Fi, auto pay is automatically set up when you put in your payment credentials. So make sure you use a payment card that you know is not going to decline on the day that they charge. However, if you are low on funds or something happens, they bill your, you know, they charge your card and it declines, that's okay. You're given three day grace period to actually pay your bill. So if your bill is due on the sixth, then you know, the ninth is when they'll cut it off if you don't make a payment. Um, so yeah, that's, that's more like post paid to me. Um, obviously setting up Google Fi is super easy. Just head to fi.google.com, put in your info, put in your payment method, no background check, no credit check, no blood sample needed, no fingerprint needed, okay? They don't need a whole lot. Just your, your service address, your billing address, your card information. If you're buying a phone, you select your phone. If you have your own phone, they will send you out a, um, a SIM card. Um, that's free of charge. Now, if you want to get your, your SIM card right away, you can head to Best Buy. Some Best Buy sell Google Fi uh, SIM cards. It is $9.99. However, you get a $10 kickback um, if you activate that SIM card. So if you have that SIM card with you, you set up Google Fi, you pop that SIM card into your iPhone, you will get a $10 credit. So making it as if you didn't pay for the SIM card, even though you had to from Best Buy. So that's pretty much it for my updated video on Google Fi in 2020. Uh, hopefully it answered a lot of questions that you guys may have. Um, and yeah, that is it for right now, guys. If you guys enjoyed it, smash that like button to let me know. Leave any questions you may have in the comment section of the video. And um, that is it for right now, guys. And as always, aloha.